Uh, so Dr. Berger, tell me a little bit about uh, what you're going to talk about at your uh, lecture tonight. Well, tonight so. I'm going to talk about a discovery that I made about two and a half years ago of uh, what are the most complete early human ancestors that have ever been discovered. Uh, they were found at a site just outside of Johannesburg in a place called the Cradle of Humankind. And we announced them, a team of myself and 75 scientists, announced them last year, April, in the journal Science. Uh, so I'm going to introduce kind of the background to that and how I came from being a Georgia Southern student, majoring in archaeology and anthropology and paleontology, uh, to ending up first in Kenya, working under the Leakeys, and then in South Africa, where I became director of the uh, institute there at the University of Vodafone, the and then and then became involved in this really truly remarkable discovery. So you're also going to be speaking at a uh, National Geographic and Smithsonian. I don't know if you already have. But in, yeah. in fact, in fact, I arrived last night from Washington mm -hmm. D.C., where I delivered a lecture at the Smithsonian Institution, and then a lecture at the National Geographic mm -hmm. Society. Um, and you're going to see quite a lot coming out uh, mm -hmm. around this discovery. In fact. Uh, probably the May issue of National Geographic. This will be a major feature in, in that. There's a, a blue chip documentary being done at the same time. So why Georgia Southern? Why come back to your alma mater and, and speak here when you know when you've been speaking in DC this week too? Because this place it gave me the, the background, it gave me the 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 sort of seminal moments that, that molded me in order to become an explorer in Africa. The people often don't realize, you know, sometimes people think those oh, small universities, they, they don't compete with the Harvards and the Yale's. But, you know, I, I get the opportunity to speak at every major prestigious university in the world. I teach at many of them. And, and I can tell you that it is, uh, it, it, it is not a situation where they are more competitive in these fields. Here at Georgia Southern, you have a, a group of staff who choose to be here. They are brave, adventurous, enjoying science, and it was that enjoyment of science by some of my mentors here, them teaching me the skills of exploration, paleontology, and archaeology, that quite literally not only gave me the passion for this field, but gave me the skills needed to make these kind of discoveries in Africa. So we had a discovery that you made about two, or, well, you and your son made two years ago. Yeah, that's right. Um, what, what are the developments you're looking at uh, in the next, you know, a few months to a few years? I mean... Well, let me, let me tell you, I'm going to allude to a few of those in my lecture tonight, but I won't give them away <laughs> quite yet, um, in that you are going to see some extraordinary discoveries announced uh, as of uh, probably around April of this year. There are going to be major, major announcements. We... What we announced last year, even though it was arguably the two most complete skeletons ever discovered of a new species, almost pales into comparison with what we found in the intro. It's an extraordinary period and place to be a paleoanthropologist. You alluded to your time here at Georgia Southern. Uh, what effect do you think that really had on you and your your career? I mean, I I don't think you can. Uh, actually, it's very difficult to put in words how important this period was. It literally was the moment in my life where I, I moved from wanting to be, I was a, I was a kid who was going to do what my parents wanted me to be. I'd be a lawyer or something like that. I hated it. But when I took some electives in geology, I loved that concept of vertebrate paleontology of exploration. And it was the nurturing and the and, and the skills imparted to me here at Georgia Southern by, by a small group of very passionate professors who took me under their wing. And I must have been a pretty oddball. I mean, I used to go out on weekends looking for dinosaur fossils on the edge of, uh, on the, in the rivers along the edge of Georgia and Alabama and hunting for arrowheads half the time. Um, I came from Sylvania, Georgia, just down the road, where I grew up in this sort of idyllic world of of looking for things in exploration and, and they nurtured that and they gave me those skills and, and more importantly they never doubted uh, the confidence I had in pursuing a dream. And they supported it all the way through going to Africa, ending up uh, with the Leakeys and then down in South Africa. So last question, I'll let Dow or whoever wants to go next. Uh, 
what would you say to Georgia Southern students who are now, you know, looking, you know, whether or not they want to get involved in anthropo anthropology or paleontology or anything? I mean, how, did, how, does, how does one try to determine, you know, what their dream is or what their career goals are? I'll tell you a simple answer to that. You find something you love and you'll be great at it. And that's the key to anything in life. Find an area that you're passionate about, you love, and then it's not work. Then it's not a job. You'll do it all the time, and the harder you work, the better you'll be, and the luckier you'll get, and you'll be great at it. And aspire to be the very best at whatever you're doing in the entire world. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Now you want to